I'll give you an opportunity to be right about this. Jimmy G, what's the best fit? Where's the spot for him? I'm going to make another bold statement. I see Jimmy G going to the Seattle Seahawks. When you look at Jimmy G, he's had some really good receivers that he's been around his time in the, with San Fran when he was with the Patriots, but he's never been around two receivers like Tyler Lockett or like DK Metcalf. If you put him with that team, it doesn't make them a playoff contender right away, but it definitely increases their chances. Okay, so there's still some issues there just in the division. Some people might bring that up, but you, for exercise purposes here, it doesn't really matter to you. You like the weapons, you like the fit, and in comparison to what we have right now with Geno Smith and then Drew Locke on that roster. Uh, David Carr, are you buying what TD is selling? Well, it's hard to argue with him because what we just saw with Jameis Winston, I mean, he basically nailed that one, so who's to say? If you think about the Seattle situation, let's take a little bit of a deep dive. Why would Seattle make sense? Okay, it is in the division. If San Francisco is crazy enough to put him in the same division, it is the same system that he ran. So it's a very similar play-action run, play-action pass. Pete Carroll wants to run the ball 50% of the time. When you watch the film, you see a lot of this with Russell Wilson. A lot of it's play-action pass. A lot of guys are just, there's some open receivers down the field. It's not necessarily a rip-through progression type offense. It's more, we're going to control the clock. We're going to try and play good defense. I don't know how good their team's going to be this year. I mean, Russell Wilson, he's a great football player. So without him, I think you're going to struggle a little bit. And that defense isn't quite where it used to be. But I think that Jimmy Garoppolo's skill set makes sense in Seattle. It is the same system that he ran in the previous couple years with Kyle Shanahan. So that will be an easy transition. I, the only thing that concerns me at this point with Jimmy is just the health of his shoulder and if he's ready to get into a camp and start and be able to compete with a guy like Drew Locke. So that's the only concern I have for it. It makes sense from a schematic standpoint and what they want to do. So who knows? Right? TD was right before. No, I'm with you. Baldy? Well, I mean, let's just start off by saying Jimmy Garoppolo is 33 and 14 as a starting quarterback in this league. I mean, he's a winning quarterback. Now, he's got to get healthy. He's the, If he was to be traded by Seattle, I think John Lynch would have a few questions about making that phone call. But if that move was made, he'd be the best quarterback on the roster. He'd be better than Geno, better than Drew Locke, better than Jacob Beeson. The team would be better. I don't think that they're a playoff team. If Jimmy Garoppolo was healthy, was able to line up in Seattle and play, not in that division. Not with the Rams, the 49ers, the Cardinals. So then you go, does it make sense to, to make that move if, even if you're with Jimmy and you're not a playoff team? So that's where I kind of draw the line right there. Okay, so I'll ask you, and that's actually a pretty good segue, Baldy. For you, Thomas, do you look at that and say to yourself, hey, if it is just a one-year stopgap, does it make sense? Or do you look at Jimmy G as potentially got a little bit of a future in Seattle? I think it definitely makes sense. It's the opportunity for Jimmy G to show and prove what he can do. It's the chance for Seattle to really see what Jimmy G is capable of. Bring him in. Partner him with DK Metcalf. You're, gonna, you're about to dump a lot of money into this kid. You want to have a quarterback that can definitely get him the ball and showcase his talent and show the fans the real reason why you pay him all of that money. All right, Garoppolo clearly is a winner. Keep in mind, fourth highest winning percentage among active quarterbacks since 2017. The list, it's a bunch of dudes. Mahomes, Lamar, and Rodgers. I want to be on that list myself. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo, not the only other quarterback that we have been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Baker, back in Cleveland? So you're saying there's a chance? Maybe. Mayfield earlier this week said the Browns would have to reach out to reconcile that relationship for him to stay. But he's ready to move on to his next team. A new squad means a fourth coach now in the last five years in this league. Guy was hurt a season ago. Go back two years ago. Like The dude was actually having a lot of success in that Cleveland yes. Uh, on that field for Cleveland. Where's the big head going? So right now, we talked about making bold statements, and that's what this is about, making bold statements. I can see Baker Mayfield going back down to where it all started. He had success in that Texas region, playing for Oklahoma, taking back to the Texans. This is a place where he can go in and he can excel. He has some maturity issues that kind of got talked about. They didn't really get addressed. He can go into a locker room that has a very young nucleus, I feel like Lovey Smith would do a great job. He worked with Jay Cutler back in the day. I kind of look at Jay, Cut uh, Jay Cutler as being similar to Baker Mayfield. Bring him in, tutor him, teach him the way, and let him be a, a really good quarterback for your team. I think this is a fair question to ask, and maybe people are going, yeah, what are you talking about? But, David, I'll ask you, is Baker Mayfield an upgrade over Davis Mills? I don't personally think so, but Thomas Davis is the GM of this team. Yeah. So guess what? You put Baker Mayfield on my team, we're going to coach him up. And I think that you brought up a good point, Thomas. 
Pep Hamilton is a really good football coach, and I think that when you look back at Pep's history, the offensive coordinator for the Houston Texans, he's done pretty well with a guy that you mentioned, Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler was a little bit of a loose cannon, kind of like Baker, has a big, strong arm, does things a little bit outside the X's and O's at times, but if anybody can wrangle him in, like Pep Hamilton did with Jay Cutler, and get the best out of him, Pep Hamilton, Hamilton can do it. Now, I personally do like Davis Mills. I think he has a high ceiling. He's a very young quarterback, could have been a first-round pick if he stayed in school maybe one more year. But Baker Mayfield in Houston, it's not crazy to me. I initially thought maybe that is a little bit of a stretch. And you already have Davis there. Why would you bring Baker in? But it's not necessarily a bad thing, bring him back in the same region, and then pair him with Pep Hamilton, who I, I actually like a lot. So I think Baker could do very well and do a whole lot worse than the Houston Texans. Well, I think that, you know, when I look at Baker, I mean, he's from Austin, Texas, going to Houston, he'd probably love it, a chance to compete. But I would not dismiss Davis Mills. And what we saw from him in the last five weeks of the season, he was two and three as a starter, threw nine touchdowns, two interceptions. He played better, the team played better. But if I went back to Baker, to me, Baker Mayfield has a chance to be the classic redemption story. The failed number one draft pick, pushed out by Deshaun Watson, injured, unwanted, labeled a brat. Got to, he's got to go, he's got no place else to go. Resigns with Cleveland. Elevates the team around him, able to put bygones and let them go, able to make up, maybe mature a little bit along the way, and maybe elevate Cleveland and get those Brown fans, you know, right there uh, in in the dog pound cheering for him again, like they did two years ago. I, I still think this is a possibility. They need somebody to broker this deal. Maybe Baker's got to be the real adult in the room to do it, but agents, Stefanski. Uh, Adrian, you know, uh, Barry, somebody has got to help broker this deal because I think it can still get done. And there's no other team out there that Baker could go to, in my mind, that's better than his Cleveland Browns in the way they're built right now. Baldy, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that's the perfect scenario. It's, it is unique, and that's where they find themselves. A, cu a couple months ago, we were like, well, Baker's done, Deshaun Watson's in, and now they find themselves in a little bit different situation. And that requires Kevin Stefanski, the Browns, to reach out and say, hey, guess what? You could do this. And you laid it out brilliantly. Baker could totally revive his entire career. All the bad blood would go away. I feel like he played hurt last year. Honestly, like, he was injured, and I think that sometimes guys try to go out and play and play through it, and he did, but he didn't play up to his level. He can play better, and he can do it right there in Cleveland. Yeah, t David, it is tough, man, because we ask guys to play hurt sometimes, and in Baker Mayfield's situation, yep. it didn't work out in his favor, but the reality is, boy, uh, my mind would be blown if he is with this Cleveland Browns team this upcoming season. Now, this conversation clearly hinges on the status of Deshaun Watson and where he is with this team regarding a suspension.